Okay, in today's video, as you can see, we're going to be going over mass defect in radioactive decay, and we're going to calculate the amount of energy released during the beta decay of cesium-137. So let's get started. Okay, this is the decay scheme. I just thought I'd show this. It looks kind of cool, I thought. The decay scheme for what? Cesium-137. Cesium-130 decays to a barium-137 through a beta decay, and there's kind of two decay paths, two possible decay paths. One is you go right from cesium-137 to barium-137 through beta decay, and then you have an intermediate step where you still have beta decay, but then you have an excited uh, state of barium-137, and then you have further gamma decay, and you still end up down here with stable barium-137. And we're going to calculate the amount of energy that's released during that decay, and we'll just show you the decay equation, barium-137 will lead to, through beta decay, barium-137. I say barium, this is cesium-137. Goes to barium-137, releases an electron. That's beta decay. You'll notice during beta decay that the atomic number increases by one as a neutron is converted into a proton. And because a neutron converts into a proton, we have the same number of protons and neutrons together. So the mass number stays the same, 137 and we release an electron and some energy. So let's calculate that energy through the beta decay of cesium-137. Now, here's our decay scheme again. We start off with cesium-137, and we're going to end up with barium-137. Now, we're going to get the masses in the atomic mass units, and these are the values you just look up in a table. Okay, these are known values. You look up on the table, really what we're just confirming or proving or confirming a known value here. So when we look up cesium-137, we look up on the table, the mass of cesium-137 is 136.90709 U's, or atomic mass units. These values which we look up are expressed in atomic mass units. For barium-137, it's 136,905,84 U's atomic mass units. And you notice I have these values expressed to five digits after the decimal point. Because you'll notice the va masses are almost the same, 136, 136, 90, 90. But when we get out here to the tens, hundred, thousands place, there's a difference. So we usually see these values expressed at least to five or six or even more digits after the decimal point. So this is our mass before, this is our mass after. You notice the mass after is a little less, that's the mass defect, and the defect in this case is 0 0.00125 atomic mass units. Where did that mass go? Well, that mass went into energy. So this is the mass defect expressed as atomic mass units. Now we want to know the binding energy, the energy released, and in order to do that, we're going to use Einstein's equation. Well, in order to use Einstein's equation, we have to convert the atomic mass units into kilograms, because the mass in Einstein's equation is expressed in kilograms. This has to be kilograms, and this is joules. So we're going to convert our atomic mass units into kilograms. Now, this is another constant you just look up. We know that one atomic mass unit is always equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and that gives us 2.075 times 10 to the minus 30 kilograms. Now we can take that mass in kilograms and put it in our equation. For Einstein's equation, it equals mc squared. Multiply that by the speed of light squared. And we get that the binding energy in joules is 1.87 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. Now, as I meant, maybe I mentioned before, the binding energy is usually expressed in electron volts or mega electron volts. So now we're just going to convert, do another conversion from our joules into electron volts. So you can see we started out with our two masses. This is the mass defect. And we just converted to kilograms. Then we kind of calculated or really converted using Einstein's equation to joules. And now we're going to take our joules and convert that into electron volts. We know that one electron volt, which just look this up again, it's just a constant or conversion factor, is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And now we get 1,165,947 electron volts. Well, that's kind of like a lot of electron volts. Well, maybe not really that many electron volts, but when we express it, we usually don't express, express it as electron volts. We kind of convert it again or simplify it again to another unit, which is the mega electron volt. So mega is a million. This is 1.165947 million, which we would commonly just write as 1.17 mega electron volts. Okay, and that's it. 
that's the mass defect and the binding energy for the beta decay of cesium-137. That's the energy released. Okay? So thank you very much for watching. hope you found it healthy. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a thumbs up for this video. And then give me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.